Who? Sony continues their mid-range cell phone line with the Xperia XA2. Is it any good? What's up everybody, I'm the Everyday Dad. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Sony's budget line of cell phones likes to prove over and over again that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a lot out of your gear. So let's find out how good this cell phone actually is. But before we get too excited about it, let's get it out of the box. I mean, again. Now I spent $349 on this brand new phone, which in my mind is quite striking for what comes under the hood. The phone itself feels great, and honestly, it does not feel like a budget or mid-range cell phone. Now it doesn't feel as good as the Essential phone, but not much really feels as good as that phone. Before we start putting it through its paces, let's cover some of the ground level specs. The main processor is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 630. It has a 3300 milliamp hour non-removable battery and supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 3. The screen is made of Corning Gorilla Glass and has a 5.2 inch full HD 1080p display. It does have a 32 gigabyte storage capacity, but you can increase that up to 256 gigabytes. The rear camera is a 23 megapixel Exmor RS sensor with an 84 degrees wide angle f 2.0 lens. It does have steady shot which is optical image stabilization and it can record 4k video at 30 frames per second. The front camera is 8 megapixels and has a 120 degree super wide angle of view at f 2.4. It has a 1 quarter inch Exmor R mobile image sensor inside of it and it also has steady shot included. And it has a headphone jack. I already love it just for that. Headphone jacks. We gotta bring them back. Stop taking them away, cell phone companies. We need headphone jacks. It runs Android Oreo 8.0 straight out of the box. For charging purposes, it has a USB Type-C connection on the bottom. And on the back, underneath the main camera, is a fingerprint reader that unlocks the phone pretty darn fast. Now, the main reason I bought this phone was basically to be a gimbal camera for my DJI Osmo Mobile 2 and to be a backup drone controller if something goes on with my iPhone. So let's see how good both cameras are in handheld and with the DJI Osmo Mobile. Who? And it's Future Dad here, coming with a, uh, a really quick update. So I spent an hour filming today, and you're not gonna get to see any of that filming because I was using my DJI Osmo Mobile 2, and for some reason, every video that I captured with the Osmo Mobile 2 shows that it captured, shows the time frame, what it was recorded in, everything. But whenever I go to view it, it just looks like a picture. I can hear the audio, but it's just like one freeze frame of the picture. So all the video you're going to see is straight from the XA2's camera app. But I only use that for a couple of minutes. So we'll do a better comparison between like the iPhone and the XA2 in the future where we'll do more of the camera specs. If you're looking at the XA2 to use with the Osmo Mobile 2, I would say hold off for right now. Because the DJI Go and the XA2, maybe it's an Android thing. This is my first Android experience with DJI Go. Uh, maybe that's a big problem. But if you know how to fix that problem, let me know. Because this was amazing to film with. Yeah, it's on a monopod. This was amazing to film with today. But if I can't get any video, then it, it is literally not worth anything. So, bad. okay, back to the video where you can see the waterfall. Because I think that's all that I got. <laughs> facing camera in the audio test in the Sony XA2. Audio test one, two, three, four. This front camera on this phone has a gigantic uh, field of view. It's a very wide angle lens, so back to the test. So what, right? So should you get a Sony Xperia XA2? If you want an Android phone and you don't have a lot of money to spend, this is actually a really good camera. I've been using it for about three days now, 
and I'm impressed with the build quality. I'm really impressed with all the functionality and the features of it, and I really like the blue. It has some things that I think all cell phones should have. It has headphone jack. It has expandable media. It's really responsive and fast to use, even though it's only got three gigabytes of RAM inside of it. There are some things that I don't necessarily like that much. I don't like the manual controls on the camera app. They're kind of finicky to use. I really like how wide the front facing camera is. At first I was like, wow, this is so wide. Why would I really want that? But then you start comparing it to your iPhone, which is a lot closer in to this really wide angle, and you can get all sorts of images in on that. And I really like that. It works both in portrait and landscape mode, and it's really great. I didn't really cover using this as a phone itself, because all phones these day and age, even if you spend $99 on it, all of them are good at texting, all of them are good at receiving calls. So I didn't really cover that too much. I mainly focused on the camera and the processing power underneath of it to do things like run apps to control my drones, or you know, with my gimbals. It's basically like a pocket computer for me. And in that way, it's really great. Well, hey everybody, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Also, click that subscribe button down below. We do cheap tech videos every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Well, hey, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can find out that you don't need to spend a lot to get a good deal on a cell phone, you can figure it out. Thanks for watching.